Right, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this non-farm payrolls webinar on Friday the 8th of July with me, Michael Hewson, and my Colin, my colleague rather, Colin Szynski, who will be joining us, hopefully joining us shortly, hopefully he's not going to allow me to free wheel it on my own. I haven't seen him log in yet, but hopefully he will be joining us shortly. But before we get started, um, let's have a quick um, risk warning. So anything that you hear here, 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 <laughs> it should not be construed as trading advice. What we're hope, hoping to do is give you some important levels, um, get, get an idea of in get an idea of direction in terms of the strength or weakness of the number and also really I think what to expect over the course of the next half hour or so because ultimately I think markets are markets are looking to price in a fairly decent number I would I would suggest certainly the expectation after the the poor number that we saw in May um, and the ADP number that we got yesterday of 172,000 is giving us a slightly positive bias in terms of expectations for today. So just to, just to sort of recap a little bit on what we're expecting in terms of the numbers, for the change in non-farm payrolls, markets are pricing in 180,000 new jobs to be added, up from the 38,000 that we saw in May. I think what was, what was important about the May number was not so, fact, not so much the fact that it was very, very weak. It was very, very weak even when you actually um, factor out those 35,000 jobs, those Verizon jobs um, that were that would would have basically taken the number down in any case. So if you add them back in, it was still a very weak number, at around about 73,000. So um, what we're looking for this number is for that number to get added back in. Um, so we're looking for the headline number, which which includes those 35,000 new those 35,000 Verizon jobs, which will go back into the numbers. So really, what we're looking for is a number in excess of 150,000, not including the Verizon numbers. The unemployment rate, we're expecting that to rise ever so slightly to 4.8%. The ADP in relation to the non-farm payrolls is, is the private sector payrolls, so stands for automatic data processing. Usually there tends to be a correlation between the two, or the markets like to think that there's a correlation between the two. You can sort of see that correlation here in this spreadsheet. The yellow numbers are the ADP numbers. So we got 172,000 new jobs yesterday for June, 168 in May, 149 in April. What was notable about yesterday was the fact that we saw a downward revision to April from 166 to 149. But if you look at the direction of travel of this red line here, this red line here is the direction of travel for non-farm payrolls, the Bureau for Labor Statistics. And that has shown a significant plunge since the February numbers that we saw of 233. We've come off quite significantly. And what we saw in May was also the fact that um, we saw a 59,000 downward revision to previous months. So I'll be looking for an upward revision to May, which should be broadly dollar positive. But I think more importantly than that, what we really need to see is ultimately um, a very positive number of 200,000 plus for the dollar to go higher. Now, the big question I think is, more than anything else, is whether on what sort of number would cause us to revise our expectations of a US rate rise. And to my mind, that is very, very difficult to quantify because at the moment, if you actually look at what markets are pricing in, in terms of interest rate expectations for a rate rise this year, this screen here is very, very informative in that regard. It's WIRP on the Bloomberg. And at the moment, the market is not pricing in any prospect of a rate hike this month or pretty much September, 5%. Now, if we get a very strong number, if we get a very strong number, um, if we've got a very strong number of around about um, 200,000 plus, we could expect to see the probability of these numbers to go higher. 
I still don't think we're going to get a Fed rate rise this year, irrespective of how positive the numbers are. But what we will get is probably an upward pop in the dollar. And if that happens, that will in all probability push euro dollar down. So I'm just going to bring these up here because these are basically what we've got with respect to the expectations for the various payroll numbers. And ultimately, the most important one, I think, here with respect to the payrolls is this number down here. The unemployment rate I'm not so concerned about because ultimately that tends to get to be that tends to get distorted a little bit by the labor participation rate. So um, if the labor participation rate drops along with the unemployment rate, the unemployment rate is based on an estimate of people who are claiming unemployment benefit um, within the next two years. After, the, after, they've, after they've been unemployed for more than two years, they drop out of the numbers um, and become economically inactive. So they're actually not counted as unemployed. So the unemployment rate is not generally an accurate gauge of a tighter labor market. So we need to bear that in mind. Let's have a quick look at the key chart points that we need to look at in the context of where we could go to next. And ultimately, it's pretty uninspiring when it comes to the S&P, because obviously we had the, the post-Brexit sell-off, and since then we've had a slow climb all the way back up towards these 21, 15, 20 areas here. Now, we're slap bang in the middle of this area here, but what we do know is denoted by these very long shadows on these candlestick charts here are that there is very, very good demand to buy stocks at very, very low levels. You can see all these long shadows. The market is closing pretty much near the top end or well away from the lows of the day. That suggests to me the market generally is quite happy buying stocks on dips. And it's not really surprising when you consider where interest rates are going at the moment. Certainly, Fed funds rate is 0.25 to 0.5. The UK base rate is 0.5. There's a prospect that it could actually get cut to 0.5. 0.25% next week. I'm I'm a little bit doubtful about whether or not that will happen, um, but that's 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 for another day. So the key levels, I think, for me on the S&P, we're right, right in the middle of it, unfortunately. So it doesn't really give us too much in, in way of latitude. I think currency markets give, give us a better indication as to where the key levels are. But certainly on the upside, um, the highs in July around about 21.12, 21.15. On the on the US 30, similar sort of story. We've got a decent resistance level coming in from the highs in April, decent resistance around there. But ultimately, again, we're range trading, and US markets are pretty much back near to their highest levels, their peaks, whereas European markets are not. So we've got a significant, what I would call, divergence in terms of what European markets are doing, what US markets are doing, and more importantly, what the FTSE 100 and the FTSE 250 are doing. But we're getting a decent rebound in European markets today. Um, that's not to say that um, that will continue, but I certainly think that a decent payrolls number is probably likely to give a little bit of an upward tick to stock markets um, some, uh, pretty much across, across the globe. So you're looking at a rally of around about maybe 9,600 on the top side, certainly 9,700. Um, a little bit higher up. Similar sort of story, I think, in terms of the currency markets. Euro dollar is like watching paint dry at the moment, unfortunately. There's not really too much in terms of excitement that we can do with respect to Euro dollar, but certainly there's decent resistance just above 111. We've managed to find a decent a decent resistance level around about those sorts of areas there. So 111.20 on the top side. But what I'm going to be particularly interested in in terms of a very of a very poor number is this level in dollar yen. Now, those of you who've listened into my webinars on previous months will know that I've been watching dollar yen, and it's a great it's a great barometer in terms of the strength or otherwise of any any payrolls number or any U.S. economic indicator. A poor payrolls number will put downward pressure on the dollar. At the moment, we're just above the 100 level. We can see how important the 100 level is. It's the 2014 lows. 
we're round about where it is now. We have been below there, but we closed well off there. So there's certainly decent support down here around about 100.2. This is the weekly chart that we're looking at. And we can see that here, so we can zoom that in. The downward pressure is certainly the predominant play at the moment. And what I would say, despite the rebound that we're seeing in stock markets at the moment, the yen is still very, very strong. So one of these charts, I think, is lying to us a little bit. Risk aversion is very, very high. There is an expectation that ultimately the dollar yen is probably the weaker side is the downside, and we're probably going to get a move over the course of the next few days and weeks towards this this lower level of 95. So that, that for me is the, is the weaker side. A decent payrolls number of, say, for example, 200 plus is probably going to get a decent dollar rally back towards these sorts of highs around about, and I would suggest probably around about 101. But certainly you can see here we've got a decent area of um, trend line resistance coming in through here. So what we really want to see is a move through 101.20 to push higher. So a positive number for payrolls could see a move back to 101.20, but I would expect that to hold. A weak number is likely to have a, see the market have a go at that 100 level on the lows that we saw earlier, earlier, earlier in the month, around about 100.15. Keep an eye on that. Sterling dollar. Big, big level on cable at the moment is 130.50, and that was yesterday's high. But more importantly than that, we've also got decent resistance at 131.20. So certainly keep an eye on that. But this certainly does appear to suggest that we're probably going to get further sterling declines over the course of the next week or so. But in the short term, I think that the, 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 the pound is vulnerable to a decent rebound back towards the 130 level, 130 and a half, or maybe even that 130, 120 level. Who knows? We have come a long way in the past two weeks. Ultimately, will, is the market short enough of sterling, or will they start to take profit as we head in to the weekend? And I think that's the, I think that's the big, the big unknown at the moment. Gold has started to come off a little bit ahead of these payrolls numbers. So again, a decent payrolls number will have a negative effect on gold. If we look at this weekly chart here, we can see this trend line resistance coming in from the all-time highs. We are struggling to get through that right now. This is the weekly chart. If we now move that to the daily chart, we can see that in even more starker detail here. So need to keep an eye on that, but I would suggest a positive number will get a positive payrolls number of 175, 180, 200. We'll probably get a moving goal back to 1340. So keep an eye on that. Um, resistance at 1379, 1380, which was the highs that we saw earlier in the month. But I certainly think, again, the bias is probably going to be for a weaker dollar. It really depends on how we play it out from here. Brent is also very interesting in the context of the breakout that we've seen below the June lows. So 46.70 on the upside is resistance there. Looking at the support on the downside, around about $45 a barrel. And we're going to finish up with dollar CAD for all the Canadian dollar clients because this chart here is very interesting. So the Canadian jobs report we could see a retest of this 131 area. We're in a bit of a range at the moment, but certainly above 131, there's a good area of resistance up there, which could see some decent selling pressure in the event of either a poor Canadian jobs report or a decent US jobs report. So there's certainly a significant amount of what I would call push-pull on the Canadian jobs report. At the moment, we're stuck around 130. We've got that support on the, on the Canadian dollar at around about 128.75. But look at the long shadow on that candle. So we can see there's decent demand down there for US dollars um, and uh, sh short Canadian dollars. So again, the bias here is probably for a, a slightly, slightly stronger number. But don't forget, we need to keep an eye on first and foremost the headline number, non-farms, but also the revision. The revision is just as important. If we get a downward revision, it could be one of those positive, post-negative type things. So I always take a view when I'm, when I'm looking at these numbers is to basically wait until the market settles down and finds its level, because ultimately, if you don't do that, it can end up, you can get, end up getting whipsawed quite horribly. Now, the market's just looking to price in a little bit of a sell-off in dollar yen at the moment, and the numbers are out. So here we go. 
14. Oh, my word. Look at that. 287. That is a really good number on the uh, headline number. 287. Much better than expected. So that's very positive for the dollar. Not a surprise there. Straight up like a rocket. Now, obviously, we factor in the 35,000 Verizon number, so 250. That is a huge number. 4.9% the unemployment rate's gone up. That's probably as a result of the participation rate increasing slightly. And yes, it has. The, the labor participation rate has jumped from 62.6 to 62.7. Does it make a Fed rate rise more likely in July or September? Again, I doubt it very much given the concerns about Brexit, but look at the average earnings numbers. They're at 0.1. So average earnings are slightly disappointing. Um, and given the fact that the Fed is concerned about wages pressure, that's going to take a little bit of the gloss off the headline number, even though the annualized number for average earnings has gone up to 2.6. So to quickly summarize that, headline number, good. Knock off 35,252. Average earnings probably a little bit disappointing, and also if we if we look at the um, if we look at the revision to the headline number, the headline revision is 11,000. We haven't seen that at the moment, but the main number was revised down from 38,000 to 11,000. So the main number was even worse than expected. And ultimately, I would expect this June number to be subject to revision when we come out um, on the July payrolls report at the beginning of August. So if you take those two months and divide them by two, you've basically got 150, 150,000 over the course of the, the last two months. So ultimately, we've got a slightly skewed picture on on the payrolls report. On the face of it, it looks very, very positive, and it is, and it's likely to give the dollar a little bit of a pep and pr pr prompt a little bit of short covering, and we can see that here. And now I'm going to be keeping a very close eye on the highs that we saw at, at, uh, yesterday at 10140 and 101.75 to see whether or not we can take those numbers out there. On the downside, obviously very bad for cable. It's going to push us back down towards the lows of the week. But I would be very, very surprised if we take out the lows that we saw on Wednesday on the basis of that number. I think the momentum, while it still favors sterling, I don't think markets are going to be going to want to get any more short of sterling than they already are. As for euro dollar, I think that's going to continue to slip lower. We've taken out of the lows of the previous two days. And as a result, I think ultimately we will continue to drift a little bit lower, but overall in the range that we've been in for about the last two or three months. Gold, not surprisingly, has sold off quite hard. That's not really too much of a surprise. We can see that here. This is the key support level that I'm now looking at on the short-term chart. These two, this series of lows through here. We can also see that borne out by drilling down into these levels here, 1335 and through here. So see how we react around these levels here as a key support area. Let's quickly close that. Dollar CAD has obviously probably gone for a nice little run on the top side because that jobs number was a really, really poor number um, on, the, on the back of the Canadian jobs report. So let's look at that. I think there's a good chance that we could probably head back towards the 131 level on the basis of that particular number. So again, a uh, stronger dollar number, weaker CAD there. Um, and last but not least, Brent crude, pretty much unmoved on the back of that crude oil. It's not really moved at all. Um, before I move on to everything, is there anything else that anyone would like to ask me with respect to um, what I haven't covered already? I've covered euro dollar, dollar yen, cable. The S&P, let's have a quick look at that. I can't imagine that's going to be too significant, but I would imagine that we'll probably retest the highs, these peaks up here. That does appear to be what we are currently doing. 21.20 looks favorite for that one.
Right, I've just been asked how I get the boxes with the, uh, with the data in it. That's a very good question and it's fairly easy to do. If you go to Market Pulse and you go to the Market Calendar, you can see a whole host of data items here. And what I generally do is I tick the boxes. So in other words, if I'm expecting a number to come out, so let's say for example, I want to um, be alerted when this particular data point is due out, I select the box. And what it will then do, five minutes before the number is due out, it will pop up onto the screen. And it will always remember those settings so that when it comes up a month later, you will then get that come up again. So, for example, if I want to remind myself next week that we've got the Bank of England rate meeting, which is likely to be a very, very big data item, what I can do is I can scroll all the way down until we get to the 14th and I'll select that and the market calendar will remember that and then 15 minutes before the announcement is due to come out it will flag up this little box and it will stay there in the window until such times as the announcement is made. So very, very simple, very, very easy to do. Go to Market Pulse, select Market Calendar and then select the item that you want to be alerted to and it is a very useful function because what it does it saves you an awful lot of market angst if you select that and it'll suddenly warn you 15 minutes before if you've got a position it will give you obviously then gives you the option of either covering the position putting a stop loss in if you haven't already got one in which you should have but sometimes if you're sitting at the desk you've got a stop loss in mind but ultimately you want to basically sit there without actually programming it in. So that's how you do that. Market Pulse is very, very useful for other little tidbits like chart forums or insights or even Reuters News. So you can see Reuters News, you can pull that up and it will basically tell you the headline numbers. So you can see there, those are the main headlines, 287 against 175, may revise down to 11 from 38, unemployment up, average earnings up but by less than expected. So ultimately, given all the concerns about Brexit, given all the concerns about China as well, because this is another factor that I think we all need to bear in mind when people are talking about the Fed and hiking rates. At the beginning of this year, the market freaked out when the Chinese devalued their currency from levels around about 655 all the way up to 670. And there was concerns about a deflationary shock rippling out over the course of the global economy. Now the Chinese authorities then came back and said, no, 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 we're not, going to, we're not going to be looking to devalue the currency. You know, we, what we're doing is we're just adjusting it lower um, ever so gradually and markets calmed down. This came back down again until it's rebounded. Now look, we're back here. And while everyone else has been distracted by what's been going on with respect to all the Brexit um, anxiety, if you like, we're now back at the levels that we saw at the beginning of the year. More importantly, Chinese growth, GDP, is not showing signs of picking up to a greater, you know, to a significant degree, and that's a worry. And I think the concern is that this will continue to edge higher. And the last thing that the the, the Fed wants is more deflationary pressure. And we also can't underestimate the effect the effect that. Um, a deflationary shock from the sharp sell-off in the pound that we've seen over the course of the last few weeks. The last thing the Fed wants is a very strong pound um, also pushing out a little bit of a deflationary shock into the global economy as well. So we can see from these numbers that wage pressures are increasing. They're ever so slightly increasing. They're certainly not increasing in any way um, the level that we thought they would be. And we've also got concerns about stronger, stronger Chinese, a, a weaker Chinese currency and a weaker pound potentially uh, depressing, um, depressing inflation over the course of the next few weeks as well. And the last, the last thing the Fed wants is a strong dollar. And certainly if we look at where the dollar index at the moment is, it is now starting to edge back up to the highest levels that we saw in the wake of the sell-off 
um, post post 23rd of June back towards these levels here. So the Fed's not going to be too happy about that because ultimately it's going to um, make U.S. exports that much more difficult to offload. Right, finally, ladies and gents, um, keep an eye um, keep an eye out on U.S. Treasuries trading at record highs, yields at record lows. We've seen that come off quite considerably. So if these if these prices these prices are still showing significant signs of weakness there, but we've rebounded quite strongly there. So rising prices, falling yields. Those prices didn't stay low for very, very long. So again here, the market's not really buying in the into the narrative of a significant higher dollar. And we've seen that dollar yen is now lower after peaking just below the highs that we saw yesterday. 101.40, the high was around 101.29. So again, anyone who bought into that dollar yen rally um, is probably sitting a little bit uncomfortably right now. The momentum still favours a lower dollar. Before I sign off, ladies and gents, are there any more questions on any of the functionality or our expectations for next week or anything like that? More than happy to take them now that we've got the payrolls data out of the way. We, do, we also do have a weekly webcast on Mondays at 12.15, which you can sign up for um, on the learn and analysis part of the CMC Markets website. Again, you know, free to join, no obligations and what, what have you. Just have to leave an email address, a valid email address. Um, otherwise, in the absence of any further questions, um, I will uh, I will sign off and uh, wish you all a profitable afternoon trading. Okie dokie. All right, ladies and gents, thanks for your company today, and hopefully see you same time next month for the August payroll or the July payrolls report, which obviously will be the first Friday in August. Thanks very much. Cheers.